What's going on peeps and welcome back to the TikTok tests episode 7 or 8 I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever been later to trends in my entire life, but you guys have been dying to see me make some of these, so I guess it's better late than never. Today, we got these quick and easy mashed potatoes made from Lay's potato chips, the two ingredient shredded chicken replacement, also known as seitan, and then finally, possibly the most famous TikTok recipe of all time, the feta pasta. I know my voice is normally plenty nasally, but excuse the extra congestion today. I'm not sick, it's just my allergies kicking my butt. But let's get right into this one. I figured the perfect starting point for today was something quick and easy, something I'm equally confused, but also intrigued by. To make the potato chip mashed potatoes, I grabbed a bag of plain Lay's and garlic powder, kosher salt and milk, some black pepper and onion powder, salted butter, and some pre-shredded Colby Jack cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that as long as the method of this recipe works, you can take this and run with it with any kind of chip flavor, any like seasonings that you'd like. That is a big if though, because instead of just starting with a plain potato, we have to boil up some chips, strain them out, and then mix in our butter and milk and all that other stuff. I'm also gonna assume that because chips are literally just fried potatoes and salt, uh, it's gonna give me the best chance of success if I follow the standard procedure and rules of mashed potato making. Meaning we gotta extract as much moisture out of these as possible in the strainer and then back in the saucepan. And also, you don't wanna overmix these because if you mix potatoes too much, like in a blender or with a whisk, they become super thick and like gummy. This ended up coming out almost exactly how I imagined. It's literally just some mushy chips and seasoning, so Let's give it a taste. My instincts definitely told me to spruce this up a bit, maybe with some butter and chives, a little sour cream or cheese, but I'm just gonna taste it as it is. They're not bad, they taste okay, and if you gave me this, I don't think I'd be able to tell you where they came from but the texture is not pleasant. The texture is super gritty. It leaves a weird like starchy aftertaste, which is weird because we should have washed out most of the starch. I don't know how that happened. They're also very under seasoned, which is my fault. I was kind of scared how much residual salt was gonna come over from the original chips. I bet you if you loaded this with even more cold butter and then a bunch of like melty cheese, you can make kind of a knockoff alley go and that would help the flavor and texture along but as it is, not that great. Next up today, we've got the two ingredient chicken replacement, also known as when somebody's trying to learn English and trying to pronounce the name of the devil. And for that, you will need some all purpose flour and garlic powder, kosher salt and vegetable stock, black pepper, paprika, and a cup of water. I'm probably speaking for a lot of people when I say that I was super skeptical of this when people started sending it to me. There's always a whole lot of meat replacement recipes going around, and I'd say the majority of them, at least the ones that I've tried, have not been that great. But this one looks really good. The way it's shredded, how tender and juicy it looked, and don't get me wrong, I love Beyond and Impossible Burgers. So if this turns out good, I'll happily be making it more in the future. Now, from all the research I've done on this, this is just another version of seitan that originated in Japan. And usually it is made from vital wheat gluten flour, which has almost 80% gluten concentration, which is insane and a little concerning because this all-purpose flour we're using is 10% gluten, as you know. But in the simplest way I can explain the final end product, it is a mass of elastic gluten after you wash off all the extra starch through multiple rinses underwater, kneading it extremely well to get out as much starch as possible. And although I was eventually able to get my water to run a little bit clear, I think we're in trouble because this was not really staying together as a mass. But I kept trucking along with this test. I let it rest two separate times, one before the rinsing and one after, both at an hour apiece. Don't forget to season it in between as well. The recipe uses garlic, paprika, salt, and pepper. And then it finishes by simmering in some vegetable stock, but do not do what I'm about to. Oh, sh That could have ended extremely poorly if I was over a gas oven. So don't forget kids, hot oil and water do not mix. By the end here, this was smelling pretty good and I was excited to start shredding it up, but 
As suspected, something went extremely wrong throughout this process. This guy was not shredding as much as it was just like breaking apart. And yeah, I guess I just gotta give it a try. This sucks, man. I wanted this to work so bad. I had some rice on the side and some toppings. I was gonna make like a little shredded chicken bowl. Uh, yeah, something did not work. The texture is literally just Play-Doh. It's weird though, because some of these pieces, they actually look like they worked a little bit better than others, which makes me think I didn't need this long enough. It could be a combination of not enough gluten formation through the kneading and then just the wrong flour. I'd really love to revisit this one, one day. I feel like this had a lot of potential and I'm always on the lookout for good meat alternatives. So if you've got a good recipe, um, either in your family or you know one online that works, send it to me and I think I'll, I'll, I'll take another crack at this one in the future. Uh, for right now though, we, we gotta keep moving on. <laughs> and last but not least, you know it, you love it, or hate hearing about it, cause it's everywhere. The TikTok feta pasta. For that, I grabbed some olive oil and fresh basil, a bunch of tomatoes and some spinach, garlic powder and onion powder, salt and pepper, crushed red pepper flakes, dried oregano, dried parsley, some rotini pasta, fresh garlic, and of course, a brick of feta cheese. Now at first, I figured this was just some random concoction that a TikTok chef put together and thought tasted good, and then everybody copied because it looks good and it's pretty easy, but thanks to one of you guys, I learned that this recipe's been around for a couple years now, and it came from a Finnish food blogger by the name of Jenny Hyrenen. Hey, Renan, one of those two. So shout outs to you, Jenny, for coming up with this. And of course, whichever one of you guys let me know of this origin. And I'm sure you all know how this one comes together by now. It's a bunch of tomatoes, feta cheese, usually some basil, olive oil, and then whatever kind of pasta you like. This specific iteration I am recreating comes from D underscore Shaba on TikTok. And I picked it because it seemed to have the most other stuff to detract from my hatred of tomatoes. Usually I love tomato sauces, but not with so many seeds and tomato skin in there, so this one might be a little tough, but I'll have to get over it. So once everything got nice and toasty in a 375 degree oven for about 40 minutes, I got my pasta cooked through and then mixed all of this crazy stuff together. It is finally time to try recipe number three and to see what all the hype is about. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking the same thing I am. My pasta to everything else ratio is a little off. Uh, the time I realized it was too late, so. Yeah, I could definitely do with a whole lot more feta, more spinach, or just less pasta. Um, but this is good. I was saying this to my mom, but I don't think I would have ever thought to use feta cheese as a base for a pasta sauce, especially in like a hot pasta, maybe like a pasta salad or something. But this is pretty good though. I mean, I'd recommend anybody who likes feta, spinach, and tomatoes to make this. Notice I've strategically been <laughs> picking around a lot of the tomatoes. I don't know that I'd classify this as like super quick. Vodka sauce, Alfredo, carbonara, most marinara's you could do pretty quick. This takes a little bit over an hour, but it's good. I'd say it's definitely worth a try at least once. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see me try next time. I'm gonna try my best to get this congestion out of my system. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision